Peace and love, family. It's your girl, Six the Goddess. And keep in mind, I'm a goddess and I'm sensitive about my shit. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm doing amazing. I wanted to make this video because I'm going to say this one time and one time only. And I'm letting you know right now, I said what I said. Now, you are free in the comments to put your thoughts, your opinions. But I'm letting y'all know right now, everything I'm going to say, I stand by it. Do not get in my comment trying to convince me, trying to change. Don't do it. You can say what you want to say. But I say what I said in this whole video. I want to make no, I don't like even talking about politics. It's not my thing. It's not my forte. That's not my place in the revolution. But I do understand it's a real thing. You know, it's it's the topic of conversation. And I've been seeing a lot of things in regard to this election that got me over here just massaging my temples, realizing, damn, like we really have a long way to go as a people before we get to that place where we really get it. Because one thing this election has taught me is, baby, we are still very lost. OK, now I'm going to go ahead and straight out start with, as I was saying, that I am not voting. OK, I'm not voting. And you know what I think is sad is this election is becoming almost like a cult. It's almost like especially black people. When you say I'm simply not participating in this. They gang up on you, attack you. I've been seeing people going through it about this election. Let me tell you, I'm going to explain to y'all my train of thought. Then I'm going to show y'all a few things of why I think that Harris might actually win this election. When she first came up as a candidate, I kind of was like, like everyone else, it was kind of like, oh, please. Like this girl think that she about to win. Like this girl ain't going to win. But I've been seeing some things lately that made me think otherwise. And I also am going to talk in a little bit about the timing of Kamala running. And she's running at the perfect time. And I'm going to explain what I mean about that. Before I get into that, I do want to talk about my personal thoughts. And I want to talk about a few things I think people need to be aware of for us to have the rest of this conversation. And before we get into that conversation, ladies, can we get into today's glam? If you do not know, I have a Patreon that is for women only. I have two Patreons. My main one is for women only. And in there, I get ready for all my live and recorded content. And while I'm doing so, um, we have all type of girl talk about different subjects. I don't hold back. I don't gatekeep. You will see every product, technique, tip, and trick that I use to create these looks. Without holding back, y'all be in the comments like, what's that lip combo? What's them lashes? Join the Patreon and you wouldn't know. Don't be a crab now, okay? We have movie nights. We have get-togethers. We have a Discord, like a, a group chat, all kind of women from different walks of life, very solution-oriented, want to put their best self forward, always wanting to be the best version of that woman in the mirror. We're getting in over there, honey, okay? We over there making money. Everybody getting engaged, getting married, having babies, honey, edges growing back. Come join the winning team. OK, come join a team of hundreds of other women that can support you in your journey, you know, to look good, feel good and continue to evolve. The link will be in the description to join that Patreon. I also have a second separate Patreon for the ladies and the fellas. And it's a weekly live show. I do call it six at six where I react to different content or, you know, watch different things or give my thoughts on a certain current events. It's a good time in there as well. It's only six dollars. So both of those will be in the description box for you all to come tap in with me. Tap in with your girl. Now, let me start out by saying this. Every year. Black people have to get this entire monologue about how this election is the most important election. I'm going to explain to you all the cycle that it goes in. OK, four years go by. Nothing specifically gets done for us as black people. No one gives us anything we were promised. Every other race continues to get bills and everything else passed for their protection, their betterment. And every four years go by and we get absolutely nothing. Then election time rolls around and they say, oh, the reason why you haven't got anything these past four years is because y'all ain't vote. So now this election is the most important election. OK, if you want to see change, if you need, you know, if you want to make a difference, if you want to fight for freedom, you will vote in this election. This election is the most important election. And then they tell you vote or die. And then all the black people, they just scurry out to the polls and you vote Democrat automatically because you have to. Because if you don't, you're attacked. And then everybody comes and votes. 
they tally the vote, they announce the winner, another four years go by and they say, oh, well, the reason why it didn't get better is because y'all ain't vote. See, if y'all would have voted, you would have had what you wanted, which we did vote. Which we did. I don't see everybody lined up offering air on top of fried chicken and biscuits lined up to vote, but they did vote. And at no point do we realize, hmm, maybe voting for the president is not our way to actually have things change. Majority of what the president is in charge of, majority of what the president is going to sign off on doesn't even affect the normal working American, especially black ones with black jobs. It doesn't affect you. Let me be honest with you. It don't got when it comes to policies, whatever policy they want to have in place, they will. Whatever policies they don't want to have in place, they won't. The president does not have a big enough effect on that. So let's go ahead and start there. The next issue I have is there is a form of manipulation where let's say I want you to pick something. I want you to pick this. So what I'll do is give you a second option that is so terrible that, of course, you'll choose what I wanted you to. And using manipulation tactics like that can be very dangerous because what is this thing of making one candidate look like the big bad wolf? It is a way to distract you from something else. And what scares me the most about this election is seeing black people say things like anybody but Trump. Oh, anything but Trump is good for me. That is so incredibly dangerous. I look at it this way. Trump is like crabs. Trump is like chlamydia. You got crabs or chlamydia, you know it, okay? Mr. Crab down there pinching and biting, you pissing razor blades. Uh, you look like you got snot coming out your peen. Like you got yellow mustard coming out your coochie or whatever else. You know if you got it, okay? It's painful. You can see it. You can feel it. Biden, Harris, the Democrats are like HIV. Silent but deadly, okay? No symptoms. You don't even feel it. You don't know it's there. And then it slowly begins to develop and eat you up from the inside to turn the AIDS to crush you so slowly that you didn't even see or feel it coming. You have to be leery when they continue to pump up Trump as the big bad wolf. When there is no difference between Trump and Biden. There's no difference between Trump and Kamala. There really is no difference between the Democrats and the Republicans. But what I can do to manipulate you is I can make one of them just look so bad. I think one of our biggest downfalls, yet one of the things I love about us so much as Black people, is our deep ability to feel. And the way that gets used against us is we going for whatever feels best for us. Okay, the Democrats... Biden, Harris, oh, they, they play the game better. So it makes us feel better. We don't like Trump. Trump makes me feel sad. Trump makes me feel bad. Trump racist. Trump mean. And when we go off of what we feel, when we can't take our feelings out of something, you rarely make the right decision when you base it strictly off of how some make you feel. I ask black people, I'm dead serious. What is it that you don't like about Trump? Like, what do you not like? Oh, you crazy. You see what he be saying and he be talking and Trump going to empower these people to be more racist. Are you, are you for real? Like, Do you really believe that for real? Like, you, you really have let these people take away from what racism and white supremacy really is and make it be about Trump. And if we just avoid him, then look, y'all not that bad. It's not that racist because as long as Trump is not there, y'all, it's not that bad. And so now it's to the point where as long as they lie to you well enough and make you feel good enough in your eyes, it's better. When I would be willing to argue that someone like Biden is 10 times worse and 10 times more racist than someone like Trump, Trump ain't the person you need to be worried about. You need to be worried about the Biden-Harris types. Now, I'm about to say something right now. Yes, it matters. Yes, we're going to have this conversation because I'm almost afraid at our level of comprehension as a people, the fact that we don't understand this. Now, 
<sighs> I, take a, I gotta take a deep breath. Now I'm gonna have to come for the boule class or bourgeoisie class Negro. Because a lot of the HBCU fraternity sorority folks, y'all are starting to piss me off. The cooning is getting out of control. I don't I don't like it. I don't like it. It's breadcrumb cooning going on. I gotta call y'all out. Okay, the boule class, the little HBCU grads, y'all, y'all giving me breadcrumb vibes. Y'all act like a side chick that really, really, really want to be in a main chick position. It's not looking good. Okay. Let me explain this. I don't see y'all going off on us about not voting for Harris. I've been seeing y'all donate to her. I've been seeing y'all call us everything but a child of God because y'all are so happy that an AKA is running for president. Now, let me say this. Let me start out with this. I respect any kind of tribalism. I respect any type of communal level support. Okay. I ain't got no problem with black people that join fraternities and sororities. I'm all for it. If you know that Kamala was an AKA and she is running and you want to say, I am going to vote to support my AKA sister. You got it. So be it. It's cool. Okay. If you are in a fraternity and you are saying, Okay, I want to support my AKA, that's my sister sorority or something like that. You want to do that? I respect that. You're respecting your tribe. You're respecting who you pledge to. You're supporting one another. I'm here for it. But why? Why do y'all have to call her black? Why can't you just say I'm supporting my AKA sister? Why does it have to be, oh my God, we're going to have a black woman as president. Let me under, let me help y'all understand the way things went for women like Kamala, especially coming up in the 80s and 90s. Let me explain to y'all how this went. White people do not accept anyone who does not look like them. Okay. Even when we spoke about, when we speak about the civil rights era, when it say colored and white, I want y'all to understand colored also meant the Asians, the Indians like Kamala. Just bear with me here because I saw uh, Trump being interviewed by the sister and her whole thing and reasoning behind why Kamala was black is because she went to an HBCU and because she's an AKA and because her dad's Jamaican. Oh, it was so cringe, like my the cringe inside of me. I was like, oh, this is literally, first of all, we just got to go ahead and let it be known. A lot of y'all black fraternities and sororities, y'all be letting non-black people in. I'm, I'm not going to point no fingers. I'm not going to say no names. But, you know, it's kind of crazy to me that, uh, you know, y'all founders founded these black fraternities so it could be a support system to be making it through, you know, back in the early 1900s. And oh, it's crazy to me that they created these opportunities to support each other, to be able to advance and protect each other. And that now, fast forward present day, y'all be letting white people in, Asian people in, Indian people in. But you know what I'm saying? Hey, but you ain't hear it from me. But let's, let's start with the fact that Black fraternities and sororities do not require you to be Black to join. Woo, I said it. Let's start there. So therefore, someone being an AKA and you saying they're black because they're an AKA, excuse me, my God today, my God today, how? Let, let, okay, so let, let's, that's my first issue. Second issue is if I'm describing someone to you and you say, Hey, you know, I say, oh my God, I saw this woman today. She was so beautiful. And you say, oh, really? What did she look like? And I was like, she was American. Does that, is that indicative in any way, shape or form of what race she was? No. If someone says I'm British, does that tell you what color they are? So can someone explain to me, why is it that you hear someone is Jamaican and in your mind, 
that's a black person. Everyone keeps saying Kamala Black because her dad is Jamaican. Jamaica is a country. If you go to Jamaica and give birth, that child is Jamaican. Uh, you know, I grew up with Jamaicans being from Florida, baby. There is Asian Jamaicans, white Jamaicans, Indian Jamaicans. Jamaican is not synonymous with your race. You can be black and be from Nigeria. You could be black from Kenya. You could be black from Brazil. The country doesn't mean someone's black. You could be white and be Nigerian. You could be Asian and be Ghanaian. Why, if you're a citizen of Ghana, you're Ghanaian. So, if someone cannot be straightforward about their race, how can they be straightforward about running a country? It does matter. When someone is willing to be a chameleon, to come get what they want from this place, get what they want from that place, that's dangerous. Us Black people who actually look Black, we can't switch our race and go get some benefits over here and go get some benefits over there. That's not how it works. So it does matter. You can simply say you want to vote for Kamala because that's your choice. So be it. You can simply say, I want to vote for her because she's an AKA. But can y'all stop saying, oh, I'm voting with her, be voting for her. You know, she'll be the first black president. That is simply incorrect. OK. Now, to go back in what I was saying earlier of what y'all have to understand, I noticed that the sister said, oh, anyone that goes to an HBCU and pledges a black sorority have made it very clear where they stand. Let me explain something to y'all. Like I was saying before, anytime it has been a separation in this country between whites and coloreds, it has meant just that. For whites, any type of Asian, Indian was considered colored. When Kamala was coming up, she, if her being young in college, trying to start her career, she was not going to be allowed a certain proximity to whiteness. Follow me on this. This is important because I don't like the narrative being pushed that, oh, well, she did choose a side because she chose an HBCU. Absolutely not. Someone like Kamala is an opportunist, a social climber. They will be wherever they need to be for however long they need to to get to the next level. As Kamala raised levels in her career, her romantic choices got wider and wider. Her circles got wider and wider, which means that was always her goal. Her goal was to always get as close to whiteness as she was allowed. Coming up back in the 80s and 90s, you know, like Kamala did, or I should say 70s and 80s for her. Her trying to force herself into high, you know, white society was not going to happen. She was too dark, too Indian for that. So the next place that she can go and be pedestalized is the black community. OK, so she's playing it smart. I'm better off going to a HBCU. I'm better off pledging black. If I try to pledge white, they're going to always treat me like the outcast or not going to accept me. It's going to go slower. Instead, what I'll do is I'll go over here to the black community because as we see, we are desperate to claim anyone, anyone who remotely want to come to our cookout. We just go to, oh my God, I'm so happy. Oh, you're black. Kamala going to an HBCU ain't a flex. It's nothing to be proud of. It's nothing to shout from the mountaintops. It's actually embarrassing. It's embarrassing that people like her know that when they cannot be accepted where they really want to be, we will. And like we're still doing right now. And she was able to get in with us, get her little education and continue to climb on up until she ended up ultimately where she wants to be, which is where married to and at the table with all Caucasoid males. So when we bring, stop bringing up her HBCU and AKA thing, it don't give what y'all think it give. It's not the flex y'all think it is. It's actually so embarrassing that when other people have standards as to say, they not like us and keep them away, we're over here like, please say you're black. 
I was cringing so hard at Kiki Palmer and Kamala and how Kiki was trying to force Kamala to be black in her hair care routine. Matter of fact, hold on. Let me just show y'all. All right. I found it. So this is the example of trying to force yourself to make fetch happen. Like it's so embarrassing. And when people say it doesn't matter, how does it not matter? I, I don't. That is so insane. If someone cannot be straightforward and stand on business about their race, if someone is even able to switch between races, y'all don't think that matters. That's the basis of a lot of things. So now watch as Kiki is trying to force this woman to be black child. This is so this was so embarrassing. Watch this. Come on now. How many times a month do you get a silk press? So, you know, I don't use a curling iron. It's too much heat. I use a round brush. Now, what kind of magical <laughs> round brush? I mean, your so, hair must She said, she kind of looked to the side. Now, for those of you who do not know, for those of us who got that Negro, okay? For those of us that got the, my name is Kunta, all right? For the people who don't know, baby, a little blow dryer and round brush is not going to cut it. You going to have to put you a flat iron or something. Now you can have that Kunta and you could try to round brush and blow dry your way. It'll probably stay like that for maybe 90 seconds. And the minute you turn your head too quick, it's going to puff. Okay. So when that's why probably for the fellows who may not know, that's why when Kamala was like, I don't, I, I just use a brush. That's why she was like, oh, now what kind of magical brush must that be is? Oh, your hair must be real fine. Ma'am, she can use the round brush and a blow dryer, like it's a blow dry bar type deal because she has Asian hair, which is basically European hair. Still from the mountains, still from the Caucasus Mountains. Okay, I don't know if y'all ever seen those blow dry bars. Okay, them blow dry bars are for white women. Okay, and they just wash their hair and they blow it out with a round brush. Okay, black girls cannot go in there, baby. You, the only way you could maybe just use a brush is if you had a relaxer and who gets those still? Okay, but she's talking about, oh, your hair must be super fine or she's not black. This is cringe. It must be super fine. Or, be well, no, it's not. How it takes a while a boar bristle or, you know, and, but it takes a lot of heat, but it's just too much heat to do that and do. Girl, you have a ship uh, on the uh, internet. <laughs> You're like, how she always got to say, you and, you and Queen Latifah are going neck and neck with the silk press, honey. You're giving it to us. Okay, so it's a round brush. Baby, it's not a silk press, okay? You know, it, this, is, this, is, this is making me feel embarrassed. And what this does is it lets them know they can continue to have year after year go and give us nothing. They still won't even make it illegal to unalive us and the more that we sit there and oh you black oh girl what kind of flat iron you use please like have some type of dignity with yourself you know this scarcity mentality of oh well we have to pick one of those no you don't see what happens when you tell people if, if someone say hey you want to get shot or you want to get stabbed and then you go and tell everyone, y'all, let's just pick getting shot. It's quicker and, and less painful. Or the answer could be, fuck you. Neither one. I'm finna, we're going to fight to the death. Okay. It, it doesn't have to be, we have to pick one or the other. The third option is kiss our ass completely until there's something in it for us as well. And this is with anything in life. If you continue to allow people to give you two things to choose from, you will continue to just ask things. There's a third option, which is you. Campaigning is nothing but marketing. Just like in marketing, for every click, every impression, every sale, someone gets a cut. It is the same way with voting. People say, why would they be pressuring us to show up if it doesn't matter? Because it's marketing. And every single one of y'all, they get to show up like a dummy and cast your vote on that ballot is money in their pocket. It's simply marketing that you came to. Okay. Now, that is my piece on the voting. Um, I am all for voting for your local sheriff. 
I'm all for voting for your local commissioners, your local judge, your local DA. Uh, the president, unless you are in certain tax brackets that most of us are not, to be honest, most of what they're talking about will not affect you. Okay, I need someone to come tell me why every time I go to the grocery store, it's $150 and I only have two or three bags. That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about how now Walmart got to get rid of their self-checkout because people are stealing their basic needs. I want to see. I want to talk about that. Okay, I want to talk about rent. I want to talk about the normal things that affect us, us normal people. And most of those things will be more affected by, like I said, your local elections, your governor, et cetera, as opposed to the president. OK, so don't let people shame you into, oh, if you don't vote in a presidential election, you're part of the problem. No, you're not. It doesn't even really affect you. You're honestly too poor and too black for any of that to even have anything to do with you if we're just keeping it real. OK, if we just want to keep it real now. What I realized about the timing of Harris um running is she couldn't have picked a better time to try to be president you know why because oh my god we are in the era of i choose the bear we are in the era of decenter men we are in the era of happily celibate and single i saw a white girl on tiktok a few weeks ago and she was like um, I am the first woman in my family to completely live on my own and pay my own bills. Like you guys, I am literally breaking generational curses. Literally every woman prior to me, my mother, my grandmother, great, all of them had husbands. All of them had to be married, listen to a man, deal with his stuff. Like I am the first first woman of my bloodline to not be married, have my own place and completely pay my own bills. Like ladies, we are really killing it. And I'm sitting over there like, who going to tell her? Who going to tell her? I'm like, oh, she's new here. Oh, look at her. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm sitting here like, oh, y'all, the white girls are new to the whole on your own, fending for yourself, like pay your own bills, independent woman thing. I'm like, oh my God, they're new to this. They're new to the whole single mom. I don't need no man. Like I'm emancipated. They're they're new here. They think it's fun still. Women are in a place now where they're seeing patterns in male behavior. They're seeing patterns in different women's results. Um, I think that now that women are able to communicate experiences and information so widely, that is why these decenter men movements are coming because a bunch of women who made horrible decisions in men now telling other women don't do it and mongering fear into them. There are more women than men on the best day. And once you get millennial Gen Z white women on board, it's a wrap. OK, OK, the the millennial oh my God, white women are in this era of they are wanting their autonomy. They're wanting their independence. They're wanting to stick it to the man. Trump represents the bear. Trump represents the type of man that oppressed many white women. Trump reminds them of their fathers, their grandfathers, their uncles, the chauvinistic, big white alpha male that is rude and, you know, cheats and acts a fool and a bunch of ex-wives. Trump represents that to women now. Women are literally in a, a season of wanting to stick it to men. They are in the season of wanting to decenter them. They are in the season of wanting to feel empowered. Now, I saw this white woman on TikTok. First of all, this almost, I rolled my eyes so hard throughout this whole thing. My eyes almost rolled out of my head. But as I was listening to her, I realized I was like, oh my God, this is why Harris might win. Because if you have women collectively already on one page about choose the bear decenter men being more aware of who men are what their nature is what their tendency is by now we've been able to share enough information to see cycles see patterns and now the white women are on a mission to want to stick it to the man and on a mission to 
feel as though they are actually doing something. White women are sitting around like, we've always just sat back. Now it's our time to take action. And I said, uh-oh, they don't got a bunch of white girls to get up and like they Avengers thinking they need to come save the world. I was like, oh my God, this girl might actually win. Y'all, please check this video out. Let me share my screen. I saw this on TikTok. And this, I'm, I'm going to show you this. And I have one other thing I'm going to sh show y'all that also made me say, uh-oh, Kamala might actually win. Especially now, uh-oh, my, my camera died. Let me, uh leaving it on that is so hilarious my camera died real quick i'm going to uh change it out give me one second my bad y'all so apparently the white women of america had a white woman zoom call where it was so many white women on the line at once that you know it uh it crashed the zoom okay and so all the white women got on there to get together to form the Avengers and Thanos to try to save America because it's their time to shine. And y'all, someone, someone, please come look at this. This is when I knew. I said, oh, God, today. I said, this is bigger than them running out to get all them Stanley Cups. All right, let me rewind this. Make sure we start from the beginning, y'all. Brace yourselves. Did for white women. Or for I'm not sure if this message is intended for white women or for black women or for all women or I'm just talking out loud but bear with me if you are one of the 95% of black women who voted for Joe Biden and you have collectively for most of your lives been brave activists to help move this country forward. And you're waking up this morning to hear that there was over 100,000 women, I was one of them, that answered the call last night and got on Zoom and talked about a plan and how we can mobilize. If you're waking up this morning and the first thought- First of all, her saying, oh, for the 95% of black women that, voted for Biden and you've been doing years of activism. What kind of activism are you talking about, Karen? Um, are you referring to us constantly having to sacrifice our womanhood and humanity to have your men take our bodies and have you all take our children from our bosom to nurse and nurture yours instead? What is this years of service of activism that you're referring to, Karen? Uh, Karen? Can you, are, I know you're not talking about our womanhood being ripped from our bosom. I know you're not now talking about activism. I know you're not talking about your supremacy systems, getting our men systematically dead or in jail and our survival tactics to somehow make it and have our race continue with your people constantly trying to hate on us and unalive us. Karen, the very fact that you think that black women's trauma responses to abuses set forth by your people and you label it as activism, right there is why I stay as far away from y'all because y'all talk too much and you don't even know what you're talking about. Honey, it's not activism. It's called fighting for our life. Okay, let's continue though. Thought is, it's about damn time. We deserve that. We absolutely deserve that. Because one thing I learned last night, and it was particularly probably Glenn and Doyle, this gal is spreading some truth. And what she said is, yes, we know that 55% of white women voted for Donald Trump. They did. And there might not be much we can do to sway them at this point. But the bigger point, the more important point, is that there's 45% of us that haven't done enough to help women of color. There's 45% of us that are waking up this morning thinking, well, shit, I can go knock doors. I can register voters. I can donate. 
what we have traditionally done as white women, and it was said loud and clear last night, our lack of action has forced black women to carry every bit of the load. I, I liken it to a football game, right? When when the ball is slowly moving down, the, you know, the ball's slowly moving down, and it's some running back who's just getting crushed and crushed and crushed and tackled, and he's going two yards at a time and two yards at a time and two yards at a time. And then when the ball's on the three-yard line, the white women come in and we're like, we've got it. We show up and vote, and we're like, look, look at us. Look what we did. We elected Joe Biden. You mean like you're doing right now? You mean like you're doing today as we speak, like you've always done, which is stepping on our backs as white women, like, whoop, 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 thanks for y'all's sacrifice. Now, here I am. Y'all, it's not safe, okay? We got a bunch of white women out being self-righteous, thinking that they're about to undo the years of torture that they have bestowed upon us as black women by going to vote for a woman of color, y'all. Be careful. The white women are out for their trophies. They're out for their sticker. They're out for their cookie. So this woman sits here and says, you know, white women have often just sat back with lack of action. No, y'all have not. For every time they was gearing up a plane to come bomb us and destroy what we were doing, y'all was there repairing the uniforms. Okay, y'all, what do you mean? So now you've convinced yourself that we've just sat back and watched all this happen. And now we're going to stand up and fight for women of color. And we're going to get out there and vote. There has never been a history, time in history, where white women and black women have worked together, gotten along. White women have always been our number one enemy and our number one op. We have never in history been shoulder to shoulder with white women equal progressing ever, not once. You know why? Because bitches ain't shit regardless of race. Let's just start there. Bitches already ain't shit. But then when you introduce the element between the Caucasoid Neanderthal female and the original black woman, this is why it is impossible for white women and black women to ever truly work shoulder to shoulder equally to progress forward because we're not equal to begin with. Okay, White women are, it's always a continuous game of catch up. They always have to participate in keeping a foot on our neck to keep up with us. That's why they've always ripped ours from us to give us theirs because they know everything we touch turns to gold. You understand that, right? So the fact that they're now formulating this, you know, triumphant music in the background, like it's a movie, like it is our time to get up and band together and help these women of color. How self-righteous of you, Karen. Tell us more, Karen, about how this minuscule act somehow makes you feel as though you're making a difference for a woman of color. Oh, because we all know it couldn't be a sister, sister. <laughs> we all know it, it, it had to be somebody racially ambiguous because we already know how your energy is when it's an actual sister. You know, one that just looks completely black. Oh, we know how y'all go to shaking in your boots then. So now we have to hear about how now this is y'all time to come together like superheroes. And it's time for us to go ahead and contribute something to women of color now. Come on, y'all. Let's band together and we can do it. Please spare us. And we missed the entire part. We were supposed to be working our asses off to get the ball down the field. And I think last night that may have ended loud and clear we've heard the message we're answering the call we are ready we're fired up the women who presented on that call last night i could not this woman say i think that after last night we ended all of that hey it's me a white woman i've decided that you women of color have dealt with too much for so too long so you're welcome, by the way, but all of us white women got on a Zoom call and decided it's our turn to help y'all now. And we also have decided that as of last night, we fixed it. Okay, we have 
turned it all around as of 24 hours ago. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, look. Bitch, go to hell, suck a dick. And kiss my ass. Let's I'm gonna let her, I'm gonna let her finish. I believe I'm gonna let her finish that any time in my lifetime that I would be on a Zoom call with fucking pink. Like I'm looking at the screen and I'm this is much different than my work calls <laughs> because I'm seeing pink and Connie Britton and Alyssa Slotkin. Shannon Watts is one of my heroes. Like I'm on this call and I'm thinking, wow, if we'd have picked this up, if we'd have listened to black women two decades ago, imagine how much further we would be. So it's time. If we the only listen to black women two decades ago. So the reality is this, you're now sitting here acting as though you acknowledging black women somehow like that's what we needed. Like you endorsing us, like the mere fact that you think that your sudden acknowledgement or recognition of us somehow now validates what we've been saying. The fact that you even think that we need your whiteness to come co-sign what we're saying before society will take it seriously is part of the problem. Okay, because it's so easy for you to sit up here and talk on all this, yet in the real world, when white women specifically see black women even being treated differently or being treated rude by men, we were just talking about, for example, Kendall from Love Island. Uh, it's a dating show here in the U.S. And we're talking about how he had like 10 white girls in his section. Two black girls got up there and he stopped what he was doing, ran and kicked out the white girls, went kicked out the black girls. Do you think any white girls turned to him and said no? No. Why are you kicking them out? They can come in here and have fun too. They don't do that. When when we're at work and black women are made to be the workhorse and the scapegoat, when you're given positions you know should have went to that sister, I've never seen a white girl say, no, I don't want it. Give it to her instead. When white women are able to win with a man because of their whiteness against a black girl and they see men treat black women like crap because of what they look like. I've never seen a white girl say, no, I don't want these benefits. No, we are leaving a section. We don't want these drinks because how you treat the black girl, they don't do that. But then you decide on your own how you plan on paying your own penance. And now you've got your white ass up here and decided that because we got on a Zoom call with Pink and we're going to help women of color. I'm pretty sure that after last night, it's not like that anymore. Had we only listened to you black girls 20 years ago, we would have been so much farther now. Because y'all been knew how to survive and fight for your life. And we didn't. And have the nerd make a TikTok about it thinking you ate. Like, da 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 It's the white savior complex for me. The nerve. Go cast your funky vote and go home. Why does this now have to turn into a putting on your cape, Wonder Woman, saving women of color? See, see how this is going too far? Karen, I swear to God, if you don't go vote and go home and fuck up and go back to your green bean casserole and your salt and pepper seasoned chicken, I know something, sweetie. I know something. Let's not make, we are making this way more than what it is. Now you got batteries and people backs. Now Karen thinks she's super Karen. And before you know it, we're going to have to hear about this later. Oh, y'all, if y'all think these white women don't stepped up and did something for women of color now, if y'all don't think they're going to throw it in our face every chance they get, you let a white hoe think she saved you if you want to. Oh, because she can't wait to revoke that. Don't take nothing from them, girl. Go to hell. We don't care about this. Our issues was valid 20 years ago when they said they was because we said it. It was valid between all sisters living the same experience. We live it every day. It was valid then. It ain't valid now because you said something. Fuck is you. Oh my God, the supremacy issue. Oh my God, the racism. My God, today. It's time. It's time for us to do our part. We are 45% of the white woman voting block. 
we might get lucky if we can pull a few of them over. But in case we can't, that shouldn't deter us from joining women of color to do what's right for our country. So that's what I took away to all the black women who have for basically 40 years said, I guess we'll have to fucking do this alone. You no longer have to do it alone. I'm not sure if this message For all the black women, for the first of all, 40 years, bitch, do you mean 400 years? I don't know where you got 40 years from, baby. 40 years, 40 dollars. Do you mean 400 years, man? Okay. Oh, y'all thought y'all had to do it alone, but you don't anymore because I'm here. And see, this is what white women do every single time to get us to really save them. But now they're just getting more clever to where not only do they want us to save them, but they want people to think that they did it now. Before they just let us save them and fight their battles for them. But now they're getting the audacity to where not only do they want us to save them, but now they want the credit for it. Now they want to look like they saved us, which makes it even worse. Because you know what this really come down to? What this really come down to is they want to be able to delete their babies. They did the same thing with feminism. Oh, the big bad wolf. Oh, the man is so oppressive. Y'all, we don't want to sit here and just be married and have kids and take care of them. I'm a woman. I can be strong too. They sat there and they told us that, baby, our fathers wasn't even there. How did we end up having to fight against men that wasn't even in the home with us? Okay, you have 10 black women, maybe two of them had their daddy in the home, baby. How did we somehow end up fighting you? We ain't have no daddy in our home oppressing up. They just left. That was y'all daddies that stayed and tortured the whole family. Our fathers were at least respectable enough to leave us and not stay and torture us. So even from back then, you had convinced us that the man was the big bad wolf. And we fought your battles then. And we was like, yeah, yeah. The man, the big bad wolf, yeah, let's go ahead and start fighting for feminism and fighting. And you know what they did? Then they gave us the hard jobs. They kept all the easy jobs and they kept getting married and staying at home and had us do all they work for them at work. Okay. <laughs> so now they're doing the same thing again. They're like, okay, we need to be able to delete our babies because nobody cheat and no one is a biggest hole as white women. We all know this. So now the white men are like, we cannot vote for Trump because he represents keeping the pure white race, having white babies, no abortions, the Republican whole mindset. So they like, baby, I don't care about none of that, baby. We need to be able to delete these babies. OK, once they went to passing laws that you can't delete the baby on this and that. That's what's making them say, oh, no, honey, we need a woman president. Oh, no, baby, we can't have that. So now they're like, uh-oh, but we're so racist that half of these white women out here, they're going to still vote for Trump because they on that have white babies, keep the white race pure, too, and keep them going. So now, y'all, we going to really need these women of color to come on over and vote because we only 45 percent. We need another 10, 15 percent to really win this. Oh, I know what we can do. Now we need to go ahead. Let's make it seem like we're helping the women of color. When the truth is, we really need them because the liberal white women need to be able to go still delete them babies. And black women are falling for it once again. And now they're going to have you march down there to vote for a woman. See, Trump is already in the proximity of whiteness. He is whiteness. He don't need to kiss that uh, dick to get closer to whiteness. He is the whiteness. Even more dangerous is someone like Camel, who is fighting a, every day of her life for a seat at the whiteness, for a place into the whiteness. Someone like that, oh, they will sell all y'all up the river to do so. You better believe it. And so, you know, what's going to happen when they sit and campaign for y'all to come vote for Camel because they need the help. And then when they have your son get pulled over for a drug charge and try to give him 20 years, try to give him life, then white women will not be there in that courtroom with you and your child. I'm telling you that right now. OK, 
when Camel turns her back completely on the black community as she has these last four years, we ain't seen or heard from her. White women will not be there lobbying for you to get you what you need. They will not. They will once again have you get up, raise up, vote against yourself, make a vote with nothing in it for you. They will then reap the benefit and will once again hit us with the damn, that's crazy. That'll be all that they have for us at the end. That's why I encourage y'all, let them have the choose the bear. Let them have the decenter men, honey. We need to be repairing our relationship with our men. We don't need to be decentering men and, and all. we don't need to be doing all that. We need to be working on coming together. Now, I saw this. Now, like I told y'all, I'm from Florida. I'm a real deal Florida girl. There is a city in Florida called The Villages. This is the other time where I was like, ooh, Trump, Trump, you might, you might do it. Now, this is the other side of, in my opinion, where Trump went wrong. Though white people do want their white supremacist systems to stay afloat. Yes, they do. But be though that it may. Yet and still, the number one thing that white people hate is for one of them to have privilege or power that they don't have. Nothing pisses white people off more than, hey, he was allowed to do it. How come I wasn't? Hey, he got two. How come I got one? That is white people's main issue and everything. It's all about how come they was able to do it, but not me. They don't like that. Whereas black people, we're conditioned more to just accept when we're given less or when we're not given equality. We're more conditioned to be taught that's all we deserve or that's all we qualify for. Whereas in white people are taught that they are entitled to certain things. So they do not like it. When one of them is given pain or privilege or I'm sorry, given power or privileges that they're not given where Trump went wrong is when he started, you know, having talking points like if you vote now, you won't have to vote anymore. That is very scary to say when we have like four generations of Trump's alive, Trump men. OK, it's not funny for you to say that when low key, if you want to turn this into some type of like monarchy or practice some extreme type of like nepotism that you got a junior a junior a junior junior that's kind of scary so that's where trump messed up is by remotely threatening other white people's chance at that power had he just kept his mouth shut on that he probably would have still had the old white vote he would have had the typical racist florida crackers vote but when he said that, I knew he had pissed some people off. Now, this city is called The Villages. This is a retirement city in Florida. The Villages is a very interesting city because it's a bunch of old, rich, Republican, racist white people who do not, who have lived their whole life. And now in their old days, they just want to be happy by never having to see any of you ever again. That's what The Villages is. And they literally drove out into the forest in the middle of nowhere and created this town. The Villages has everything. You never need to leave there. They have their own hospitals, grocery stores, whatever it is they need it. Everyone drives around the whole city on like golf carts. OK, it is rich, white, racist, period. OK, they don't want it. They live their whole life having to deal with desegregation and see y'all Negroes. They don't want to do it in their final days. So they created a whole area called the villages for them to retire on their own. Also, a fun fact, the villages has one of the highest STD rates in the entire state of Florida. The old people are out there on so much Viagra and Crisco and they old, old people are using no damn condoms that they are literally passing STDs around one of the highest rates in the state of Florida. Isn't that great? Much of freaky old white people. But anyway, when I seen them white folks out at the villages doing this campaign for Harris, I said, my God, Look on the golf carts. See, I told y'all, look at the golf carts. I said, oh, Trump, see where you messed up is when you started hitting them with the, this gonna all be for me and y'all can't have none. That's where you messed up. I said, oh, snap. And uh, Kamala also came forward with a nice, good, old, white, brash, white VP to run with. So now that she got the backup, of a white man 
I said, my gosh, she might actually win. We never know. Um, it don't mean me no, never mind anyway, because the same thing will happen in four years will go by and nothing will have changed regardless. But uh, I want y'all to understand that it is very dangerous to just let anyone claim black. I want y'all to understand it is dangerous when other people in society see you being so desperate to be accepted or be included. It is dangerous when people constantly give you a big, bad decision. Like, don't do this. This is much better. And then half of the time, what you think is better that you're getting away with is even worse than the big, bad wolf what would seem like the big bad decision to make and my point is to just be careful all of the groups that have the strongest economics don't vote okay you don't even see the indian and asian people campaigning for kamala they don't care about who's president because what they know is strong family structures you don't need to worry about politics when you have a strong family structure when you have a strong family structure, it's your own justice system, your own educational system, your own morality system. That's what strong families do. And that's why you don't see her own people out here complaining. Is she going to save them because they save themselves? I just want us all, please stop cussing each other out, falling out, families falling apart over voting and elections. Stop. It should be a crime to have families be broken apart or be arguing or, or or mad at each other over voting for the president come on y'all let's stop with the whole it doesn't matter why does it matter who cares this is the only decision we have let's stop with the scarcity okay let's not make this more than what it is and let's remember that regardless of who president god is king god is first and the black family is the only thing that is really going to save you Y'all, please let me know y'all thoughts on what we discussed here in the comments. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel, like the video, and I will see y'all on the next one.